Okay, so I did the side. I am going to put a relief, just a little bit. So we're going to drill a hole first. Yeah, we're doing a little bit of scraping against the bottom. <clears throat> this boring bar is pretty much the same size as the, the hole, so I need to get another boring bar. This one doesn't stick out as much. Way better. Perfect. I want an inch. We're about ten thou under an inch. It's a pretty good eye. <laughs> uh, let's test to see if that will work in terms of clearance. Because <clears throat> in steam engine, there's something called clearance at the top of the piston. It has a lot to do with all kinds of stuff, exhaust. Back pressure, maybe, I can't remember. Uh, I know it has to do with engine RPM, you know, how fast can it, uh, the steam fill up the cylinder. The smaller the clearance you have, uh, the quicker it fills up the cylinder. There's a whole thing, I don't remember everything, so let's see if this is going to work. Exactly what I wanted. All right. Yeah. That means we are done with this part. Well, except for the holes. We just need to do the holes, and then we're done. And that's gonna be easy. But I ordered them. I ordered the transfer screws. I don't have them, so I'm gonna have to wait until hopefully the end of this week. All right. <clears throat> so here's the head. Uh, and like I said before, there's a little bit of inclusions up here, but that's okay. Um, I'll line up the casting lines. It's pretty good. The color of the iron is a little different, but... Some, uh, some vacuum. See that? It's making pressure. That's pretty exciting. It's really starting to come together. Just need the the head bolts. Alright, let's, uh, I guess I'll just wait a week for the transfer screws, but you don't have to. Alrighty, so my uh, transfer screws came in, so we're going to take this head off. Really good fit in there. And, so the way these work is... Uh, so it comes in this little container and the back screws off and then inside there are these little these little screws see if I can make it focus and you see that there's a hex that hex is how you screw it down into the hole and then the point is for uh, transferring the center of the hole so 
we're just going to put one of these in each one. So I don't have enough to do all of them, uh, so we're going to have to improvise. So we use, on the, on the other end of this, there's a little uh, hex that you can use to drive these down into place. And actually, it's just the right size, they're just the right length. Hopefully this makes a reasonable sized hole, or dimple, because this is some pretty hardened cast iron. I'm going to line up the casting marks from this part because uh, I think that's going to look the best. Let me grab a hammer. So I'm going to be hitting steel on the cast iron, but again I'm not worried about this stuff. Hopefully that's the right choice. Let's see. Oh wow. <laughs> I hope these are hard enough. Let's get uh Okay, I got some of them, but this top one needs to come out a little bit more. Alright, so now let's try this again. There. So now I'm going to take two out and put them in the spots that didn't have any holes. And I'm going to put this back on. I'm going to make sure the, whole, the existing ones will seat. Okay, so now, probably won't be able to see these guys. Let's see, focus. Okay, so here's one right there. There's another one. So, I'm going to center punch these uh, just to make them a little deeper. Okay. <clears throat> There we go. So the vise that my buddy uses for his drill press um, is not as big as the one I have and I can't fit this in. So I'm just going to hold it and I'm holding it with a welding glove because this is a little sharp because it's a sharp corner. I should have broken it more on the lathe but just in case it wants to jump out at me it's I have this like you know a glove that will sort of protect things. Uh, theoretically at least. So. Got a smaller bit.
Man, this is not working. Okay, I brought the uh, bigger vise, so we're just gonna drill through this with a smaller one first. Man, the drill bit though. So it's a couple days later, and um, went on McMaster car and just got a couple uh, solid carbide drill bits. So uh, this should hopefully go a lot easier. Two of these drill bits. I got one small one and one one bigger one 70 bucks <laughs> so hopefully this works <laughs> to the next one. Sorry the uh, quill is a little bit in the way. Uh, but it's just drilling. camera I just cut these studs out of a piece of uh, threaded rod uh, and I finished drilling the holes in this guy um, I really need to start throwing silicon in the melt to make uh, these parts less hard now th this particular part I only let cool for about five or six hours so uh, if I don't use silicon, I know for a fact now <clears throat> that I need to let it anneal for a full 24 hours. So here we go. Let's see here. Oh, that's beautiful. That is perfect. I mean, there's like no play in that. Beautiful. So let's just thread these nuts on. Oops. Tightening a crisscross pattern. And that's that's gonna be it you can see that uh, we are indeed making compression if you can hear that That's a very good sign considering there's no gaskets. Alright, that's really coming along. So, uh, some of you may have noticed in the drawing, uh, I made a, uh, provisions for a sort of a tap right here that will, that will go in the top of the cylinder head. So, that's kind of the only thing that I forgot to plan for. Uh, was the tap to get rid of the condensate between in the cylinders um, for those that aren't aware uh, you know just like in a gas engine you don't you want to avoid what's called hydro locking which is any liquid in the cylinder because as the cylinder goes as the piston goes up liquid won't compress and given enough forces 
you're going to break something. Something will break when that cylinder is coming up. Um, for steam engines, for gas engines, the, the, the threat of that happening is when, say, you're driving in a deep uh, puddle or in deep water and your engine sucks it in. It's got all that inertia and it's moving real quick and then it gets water and boom! Uh, bends the connecting rod, or that's usually what happens is it bends, bends the connecting rod. For a steam engine it happens either when you are first starting up the engine, there will be steam, uh, the steam from last time that was left in the engine will condense back to a liquid and you'll have liquid in here. Or, uh, I mean just even, even just starting when there's no liquid in here will make liquid because the engine is cold and the heat of the steam, the, the heat transfer will go from the steam to the engine, you know, assembly and it'll condense the water and then you have to pump that out the first, you know, few seconds of operation. You have to open the, the valves and pump it out. Um, now, uh, I could put a tap here like I did in my drawing, but I don't have any way of putting a tap here. If I, if I planned accordingly, I would have put a boss in the casting here or something where I can put a nice neat tap. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not about to drill ugly holes to get a tap. And that's because I don't, I'm, I don't think it's going to matter. And I, I would like opinions from this, uh, the guys who make model steam engines. I don't think it's going to matter for an engine this size. <clears throat> um, I'm not using high steam pressure. Again, it's only going to happen when you're first... You, the, the risk of hydrolock only happens when you're first starting the engine. And I'm not using high enough steam pressures to, to cause any damage, in my opinion. What I think will happen is uh, the piston will just go up and it'll just... And then it'll just, you know, push the water out these ports out the exhaust. Um, I, there's not enough oomph there for that resistance to cause damage to the connecting rod or anything. Uh, it's just, it's not, the piston is small, so the, the force on the piston from the steam is small because the pressure is small. I'm, I'm working with 100 PSI, so it all depends on your pressure and your steams and your piston area, right? 100 PSI on a 2 inch piston is a lot less force than 100 PSI on a, I don't know, 36 inch piston with the you know whatever size they used to make steam engines they, they were humongous big difference it goes as the square or the radius so you double the radius the power goes up by four anyway I don't think it's gonna matter um, I'm gonna go with it and if I got if I encounter problems I can remake parts you know I can remake a connecting rod if it breaks or, or whatever It'll suck, but I mean, I'm making the parts regardless, so I think it'll be okay. So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. It was really, this one was really fun because it really kind of makes the whole thing sort of come together. You know, it's starting to really look like a, like a steam engine now, at least the top part. So, uh, so I am talking a lot. <clears throat> and the next part is going to be the valve gear. So actually I have the pattern made. Here's the pattern. This, 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 and this are not going to exist. Those are just to hold the core prints. It's going to have a kind of a complicated core. Uh, and this will go here. And then, uh, then there's only a couple more parts after that. And then the whole top end is done. So that's very exciting. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.